Hello and welcome to Joe's Art History Podcast, a podcast which celebrates all things art historical with me, your host and your resident art historian, Joe McLaughlin. Hello and welcome back. It is episode 53 and this is the penultimate episode of season two. And this week I am going to be doing a deep dive into a question that I ask in every single podcast episode to every guest that I've ever had on here and also is a question I ask myself continuously to my clients, my friends, the artists that I work with during my day job and it's a really big one and that one is why is art important? It is a humongous question really when you think about it and something that I understand when I ask people very out of the blue it does always take them aback and a couple of minutes to really sort of get their head around and frame what they would like to say and I myself have also been asked in an interview once before and was completely annoyed by the fact that I had nothing really ready that I was happy with or that I felt justified why art is important. Art is something for me personally that has engulfed every part of my life in an important and meaningful way and I can't really look around even the room that I'm in now and not see art or design in some way, be that the computer that I'm using to record this on or the books that I'm looking at or in fact the art on my walls that I choose to decorate my home with. Art is something that I feel is so vital and yet so underappreciated in terms of its power, its impact and its importance within society. And it's something that really sort of drives this podcast and making it more accessible to people, feeling that more and more people can engage with art and feel like they have a right to engage with art as well. So I thought I would do a podcast episode all about the question, why is art important? So let's get started. So why is art important? A huge question, as I'm sure you can imagine, and something that whenever I ask this to a guest on the podcast, they always kind of go, oh, and they take a couple of minutes to sort of gather their thoughts and think of a way to answer. And there is no right or wrong answer to this question, because really the thing is, art is so personal. And what do we do when we don't know the answer to something in this wonderful world where information is at our fingertips? we Google it. And that's exactly what I did. I Googled why is art important? And it came up with all these amazing articles and different examples and different situations and scenarios about why art is important. I found a blog article by a woman called Melanie Bisacon, and I'm going to read you a little extract from it here. Humans have a relationship with art in one form or another since the beginning of time. From prehistoric cave drawings to ancient instruments, it is obvious that art has always been and will continue to be interwoven into our existence, regardless of race, political learnings or cultural background. People appreciate art in different ways, whether it's music, dance, poetry, drawings, paintings or even graffiti. Some like to be directly involved in the creation of art. We know these people as artists, while others like to experience and appreciate it. Whatever the case, art plays a big role in how humans see and interact with others and the world in general. Art helps us emotionally, financially, psychologically, and even helps to shape individual and collective personality. There are so many reasons why art is important in the world today and always. But just in case there might be any doubts as to whether it is, here are seven reasons why in our humble opinion, art is extremely important to the world. And the article then goes on to list seven reasons as to why art is important. These are, we are all naturally artistic and discusses how humans, it's kind of within our DNA code to be creative and look for visual imagery as a source of inspiration and refuge. It says art crosses all divides, so works of art, whether it's physical or an intangible form, can easily be understood by people from different social classes and cultural backgrounds, political backgrounds, and that there's so many different types of art as well, which I think is a really important point. 
when I think about really what I've spoken about on my podcast, it's mostly sort of, it's artists that have done art in the more sort of traditional sense in terms of painting or sculpture, um, maybe some graffiti artists in there. But when I think about, <clears throat> but when I think about when I was studying art history, all the arts, all the art subjects rather, seem to intertwine in sort of weird and wonderful ways. Um, music intertwined with dance and dance intertwined with fashion and fashion intertwined with art and literature and just all these fantastic things because they are one and the same and they feed off and bounce off each other. And I know in my podcast previously I haven't really spoken about, well, to any great extent sort of fashion or music or English literature but literature was such a huge inspiration to art for centuries and really when you think about it in the sort of early centuries of the world and the art sort of coming up and early centuries of the art world and the art sort of moving through who was it made for who was its patrons it was the church and that was very much informed by the Bible, by a book, a piece of literature. And that is what filled people's heads and was brought to life through art history. And actually, when I was a student, in order to understand what was happening in sort of early sort of Italian Renaissance works of art, I actually took a module on biblical studies so I could familiarise myself with the stories and everyone, all saints have signifiers and what different symbols mean to different saints. And I found it really, really interesting. Maybe I'll do a podcast episode on that. But what I'm trying to say is art is not just painting, drawing, sculpture. It's a huge spectrum and category. And also there's new art forms happening all the time, like TV and film. That's These are art forms. These are celebrated. These are people being creative and when you think about all the cogs that sort of come together to make these things art, you can engage it with art in so many different ways, it's not just the traditional sense of going into a gallery. And I think now more than ever, it's more accessible, particularly with the internet and something like Instagram. You can follow an artist that's working in the deepest, darkest depths of Peru, or you can follow an artist that's living and working in your hometown. And it's a really powerful tool. So it's just something that I feel like I've never really brought up before. And as I was saying previously, when I studied art history, when I was particularly my undergrad at Glasgow, we did lots of wonderful segments on different things. We had a whole segment on Gothic cathedrals and the art form that is Gothic cathedrals. And I loved that. We also did a module on stage design, the history of stage design and it was something I'd never really thought of before when all the sort of work and detail that goes into the staging of a show. If you've ever been lucky enough to go and see a show or a play in your hometown, there someone has designed the costume, someone has designed the set. These things don't just happen. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is art is far more than just painting and drawing and it's something that I've tried to do in this podcast is show the breadth of what art history really covers. We've got some episodes on fashion history, we have some episodes on sculptors, photography, buildings, that's another one as well, architecture, I've completely forgotten about that, architecture is definitely an art form, yet yeah, it's all-encompassing and it surrounds you every single day. Slight tangent there, however, the article continues. Art is good for you. So by beautifying your surroundings, you're helping to de-stress and form comfort. And it says that art is essential for physical, emotional and mental well-being. Then it gives the example, music is used to help with people that are battling depression. People use art as a form of therapy. It goes on again, number four, it allows self-expression and self-awareness. Number five, the possibilities and personal benefits. Art allows for complex ideas to be broken down. And the art also assists with the recording of history, which are two very, very important points. Art really is a tool that is used as 
a reference point. And what I've done throughout this episode, and this very sort of nicely links into my first throwback, as I've said previously at the beginning of this episode, I ask every single guest that I've had on this podcast this question, or try to at least, and I have over 50 responses to this question. And every time I ask it to someone, it always takes them a little minute to sort of think about it and how they want to frame it. And I've been asked it as well in an interview before. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's such a huge question. Where do you even begin? So what I've done is I've gone back and I've taken some segments and snippets from different episodes of what people have said. And on the subject of it being something that records history, I'm going to share with you the response from my Charles I and his Pearl Earring episode where I spoke to the brilliant antique jeweller Yatcha Yang. And here's Yatcha's response when I say to her, why is art important? One final question for you. Okay, so this is the Joe's Art History podcast and I've asked all my guests this question so far. Why is art important? Well, I think... Um... Especially for, I think for somebody who's like me, so into jewelry, um, art is just so, it's just such an incredible way to record what happened in the past. So, you know, if you wouldn't have been, if it wasn't Van Dyke's painting, we wouldn't have known that like, King Charles I was uh, so into like his earring, uh, you know, we could see him wearing that from, from different portraits. And if it wasn't, somebody who's sitting there painting and recording everything you wouldn't have known what you have been like back then and why not everyone needs a bit of art so in this episode which i think is about episode eight or nine in season one yachu and i have a brilliant conversation about the history of charles the first's pill earring and yachu actually tracks the history of the earring through Charles's portraiture through his whole life so he was given this pearl as a gift when he was 15 and was so completely obsessed with it he wore it at every professional sitting when he sat for his court painters and he never really took it off and he even wore it when he was beheaded in 1649. The pearl earring still exists today it was passed to a family member and it's now in a private collection somewhere in England. I think I've got Northumberland in my head. I'm not too sure why. But it was the first time really that I had looked at art as a really important way of recording not just the history of people but the history of the objects that people use. And it really opened my eyes to think and ask better questions when I look at portraiture in particular and think why are they wearing that earring or why that necklace? Why are they wearing that dress? Why are they sitting at that table? Why are they sitting with that dog? Or why are they sitting with, I don't know, these children or, or family? What is it trying to say? What is it trying to communicate? Because these things aren't there by coincidence. Every inch of a portrait painting throughout time has been thought of and every object that's placed within it has an importance. And it's a really interesting episode, not just to talk about Charles's love of this pearl earring and how it's chronicled both the life of a king and the love of this object that he has, but also we talk about the history of pearls in general and we, talk, we go on to talk about some of the most important pearls that have ever been sold at auction and where they are now. It's a really great story with one of Marie Antoinette's pearl necklaces and where that is now and um, Elizabeth. Taylor's La Prima Vila, I'm sure that the pearl is called the biggest pearl or one of the biggest pearls in the world and where that is now. It's so fascinating and this conversation stemmed from Yatch is a very good friend of mine and the two of us visited um, a really great exhibition called Charles I King and Collector at the Royal Academy, oh my goodness, 2016-2017. And it was a collection of all these amazing paintings that Charles I had had commissioned, which were then, when he was beheaded, his whole collection was sold off by Oliver Cromwell. Um, it's a very, I might do an episode on it because it's such an interesting, he's a very interesting character. And he was the first monarch in British history to really build up a phenomenal royal collection. And then when he was beheaded, it was sold to raise money for 
Cromwell and his people. So this is why there's so many great works of art that were made in Britain and sort of have spread out across Europe. It's fascinating. Anyway, I'm going off on a very big tangent. I'm going to share with you now the response from Katie Wignall when I asked her why is art important. And Katie, if you can remember, was my guest on episode two of Joe's Art History podcast. And it's a brilliant episode all about the Barbican and the history of the Barbican in London. So here's Katie's response. But my question is, why is art important? Oh, that is a big question, isn't it? Um, I think art is important because it allows the opportunity to think of things outside yourself, to tackle really complex problems or emotions and it's just a way of expression and when you see something anyone can relate to it in any different way there's always going to be a sort of unique um, reaction to it and so I think it's important because it sparks that feeling. I just think that was uh, again another really interesting response and it really made me think about art and its power to communicate messages to people and even when I think of my life and when I've turned to art in moments of complete loss and despair and particularly very recently thinking about lockdown I don't really know what I would have done without all my art books or being able to watch a documentary about art on Netflix or Amazon and then also how art was used to communicate very complex matters, particularly during Black Lives Matter. And even when I think about the Black Lives Matter protests that were happening in Britain and particularly in Bristol, when the Edward Colstone sculpture, which if you're listening from abroad and you haven't heard about this, when the Black Lives Matter protests were happening all over the world in 2020, in Bristol, there was a group of people who took down a sculpture of a well-known slave trader in the Bristol, Bristol was a port city or town rather in, in England and they took this work off its plinth and they threw it into the river and it was eventually fished out and actually last year it went back on display in Bristol museums to start a conversation around protesting and reactions to public works that should and shouldn't be there and I think art was a very it was a very powerful moment within the British protests and there was a lot of backlash you shouldn't have done it or they, sh or they should have done it they shouldn't have done it regardless of where you stand I I found it very powerful and I think art can enrage as well as I don't know, as well as helping you empathise and, and find allies in a moment, particularly during these protests. And I think Katie just sums it up beautifully there. It can help you process complex stories. It can help you, I don't know, take up arms almost and, yeah, sort of move towards a common goal and, and being sort of very powerful. And it was a very, very powerful moment when that sculpture was taken off its plinth and, and thrown into the port yeah I think it's I think it's so fascinating and again it's just another example of why art is important it can sometimes help communicate things that you physically can't and you don't know how to and in a moment of anger or upset or euphoria art can sum these up beautifully for you and this leads me on very nicely to when I spoke to British artist Joanne Oates Joe Oates about Georgia O'Keeffe. And this is what Jo's response was when I asked her, why is art important? My final question is, why is art important? Oh, that's, oh, that is big. Um, yeah, um, it's important, well, if mm. it's important to everyone or important to me, or, or is that a both question? <laughs> um, that, it's, hey, whatever, whatever road um, you want to go down, I think, Well, I think she, actually <laughs> when I think about it, I think that they are actually the same same thing. It's, I think art, art mm. allows you 
and this is true for me actually and that's a whole other conversation but um it allows you to express things that you couldn't express in other ways particularly verbally or, or writing them down um mm. it's amazing how a color a brush stroke a form a shape can help you like showcase something you're feeling in a way that a word can't <laughs> I think that's my main main reason why art is important and that's it yeah and it helps and therefore it helps people that. you know express themselves and help us sort of make sense of the world and so funny that you said that there actually because that reminded me of something that I read about O'Keefe and that's what she said about color is that and and form and shapes is that she can express something better in a form than what she can in words and she there's a quote that I read somewhere, it might be on uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Arts website, where she says, words are not Ah, that's good. So I remember that one. I should have said that. <laughs> so there you are. Well, uh, no, it just made yes. another akin moment with... Uh, <laughs> with okay. So if you missed that quote there, it was, words are not my friend, the canvas is. And... I think it's so true for so many people that art can just communicate and help them process things so much better than and so much easier really than sometimes words can. I know for me, for example, when I'm a bit upset or feeling a bit lost, particularly during the pandemic, I was looking at my art books and speaking to people and that's actually the reason this podcast started. It was to help me connect with people and celebrate art and help me try to sort of process and move through a very, very complex and difficult time in my life and everybody's life when the world seemed to be quite bleak. And I remember the first time I went back into my gallery that I was working for at the time and it was so emotional to get back in and, and see art in real life again. And I just think it's so important and it can help you process so many things and there's been so many times in my life where I've done a little doodle when I've been upset or I've put on some music if I was sad or wanted to sort of pick up my mood so then I put on happy music or I want to celebrate and dance with my friends or we go to an art gallery and we see a show that completely moves me to tears or gets me really excited. I think it can communicate things in so many beautiful ways and it will forever be an important communication tool and a non-verbal communication tool as well, particularly when you think about paintings and sculptures. And what's great is art is so subjective. So I could look at something and find it so awful or sad or uninspiring. And then someone else can look at it and it can be the best thing that they've ever seen and really transport them somewhere and neither of us are wrong and that's what's great about art and I think people get so lost in all this academic research and what does it mean and, and I always say this to people like if you like a work of art because it's blue that's that's a good enough reason as anything it doesn't matter why you like it if you like it and it speaks to you there are no right or wrong answers and this is where I have slight beef with art history because I think art history is pinned as this very highly academic thing that's only taught at universities and of course it is it is academic there are those aspects to it of course there is but it's a really important tool in communication and understanding and sometimes empathy as well you can look at a work and completely empathize with a completely fictional character on some occasions and yet you completely understand what they're going through. I think Kehinde Wiley's work does that really beautifully, actually. Um, and I'm thinking of Kehinde Wiley is an amazing American um, painter. And what he does is he inserts modern day people of colour into historically, sort of historical paintings and copies the poses of the original paintings, but keeps the sort of modern day clothing of his sitters and then does these very sort of highly decorative backgrounds. But he also does a series called The Ship of Fools. And it's all these people that are sort of kind of drowning in the waters, but they're trying to sort of clamber up onto this boat 
and to me it sort of speaks of particularly now like the internet age of everyone sort of clambering to sort of do their best and look their best and and actually we're all in the same boat nobody's life is perfect it's all it's all just a mess and we're all trying to navigate the same messy waters and I think when I look at that painting that's what that communicates to me beautifully yet someone could look at it and not see that at all I'll share the I'll share the image of it on my Instagram um for the highlights reel for this episode so do have a look I'd love to know what you think anyway I'm now going to share with you the response from Robert McCaffrey, who was my guest on episode 13, unlucky for some, but not for us. And Robert was on talking about Alexander McQueen and the sublime. And he spoke about his amazing, amazing collection, number 13. And just, it was just such a great episode. But here is Robert's response to the question, why is art important? Of course, this is the Joe's Art History Podcast, so I do have one final question for you. Uh Uh-oh. But my question is, why is art important? Wow. Um, Okay, well, we've talked a little bit about how art is subjective, so I think I have to talk about why art is important to me. Mm -hmm. And as an art historian, I have a specific perspective on this to me it's important because it captures a different sometimes contradictory snapshot of a moment in time like the history books they record one thing but art can tell us something else and art can convey the feeling and I think that's what we've been talking about quite a bit the feeling the mood um the anxieties of a period in time, more so than any text or historical timeline can. So I would say art is important to me because it completes the picture um, and it shows us the human in history. Oh my goodness, I love that. Shows us the human. Shows us the human in the history. It's, It's so true though and I think I don't know if this is because I am currently, I'm recording this, I'm up in Scotland, so I'm back home at the moment. And I've been really looking at the work of the Glasgow Boys quite recently. So James Guffrey in particular is somebody, a Glasgow boy artist, who I'm completely obsessed with. And there's a portrait that he does, or he has done rather, called Old Wally. And it's this, just this really old gentleman who has obviously spent his life working in the field. And when I was doing a little bit of reading about it the other day, it was saying what's great about Guthrie and his subjects is they're real people and they're human and they show you the real toil of what was happening on a day-to-day life. It's not this polished interior from high society or kings and queens and everyone celebrating the Industrial Revolution and reaping the rewards from it. it. shows you real people in those times and that they were the workers and that the toil that they went through on a day-to-day basis and he's just a subject who has lived and had a very difficult long working life and Guthrie does this as well with children working in the fields or coming up from the mines and yeah I just feel it shows you as Robert put beautifully the human in these situations I just art is so important for so many reasons and as you can see from these responses there is so important for so many different reasons to different people and perhaps you agree with everything perhaps you agree with nothing but I would love to know why is art important to you And a few weeks ago, I threw this question out onto my Instagram and I got a few responses. So I'm going to share them with you now. So my first response was from Great Human Chronicle or an Instagram page called Great Human Chronicle. And when I asked why is art important, they responded by saying, because we need stories to help us arrange the world into something comprehensible. Art lets us storytell. I couldn't agree more with you. When I say to people that I studied art history, they say, oh, what? what did that entail? I essentially tell them, I sat and listened to people telling me stories for four years. 
and now it's my turn to tell the stories. That's what I get to do in my job every day. And it's such a huge privilege and it really is. Art is all about stories. When you look at a painting, as I was saying earlier, ask questions. Why are they wearing that? Why are they sitting where they're choosing to sit? Why have they chosen to have the people around them? What's the story? What are they trying to communicate? Who were these people? Why were they so important enough that they had a painting made of them? And it's just so fascinating. And I just think everyone loves a story. And that's what art history is. It's just story after story. I have another response from an Instagram page, Kendall Schlosser. And apologies, Kendall, if I've pronounced your second name wrong. But they have said, art shows us the beauty in the world, in everyday life, in the fantastical. Art is an aesthetic. Art makes life look and feel enchanting. This is especially important to people who struggle to see how amazing life can be and look to art in times of darkness. I know from my own personal experience, now when I feel down about life, I look to the beauty in art to remind me why life's worth living, which is beautiful. And art, as I said again previously, art has been a crutch in so many dark times in my life when I'm feeling lost or confused or I'm upset about something. I'll put on music or I'll watch a film or I'll go to a show or I'll look through my art books and try and make sense of what's happening through art and make myself feel better. We have another response from Art History on Display. The combination of emotion, real life and the imagination being depicted in so many different ways is so important, not only on a personal level by the societal art, not only on a personal level by the, by society, art can also make room for self-expression, activism and beauty, which is true. And Mark Galloway also says, the best art stretches and challenges us to think about who we are as individuals and as society. It's so true and I think you can see that in the examples that I've given here with Black Lives Matter, how it can help you communicate complex issues, how it can help you feel united in a moment where there's divide, how it can help make sense of complex situations helps you make sense of you and empathize with people on a canvas or in marble or in a tv series or or in a beautiful piece of music art can touch and inspire you in so many different ways so i think really all that's left for me to say is why is art important how can you ever imagine that it's not? It's part of your everyday without you realising it. The chair you sit on, the car you drive, the train you take to work or the bus you ride to school, everything has been designed. The books you read, the television programmes you watch, the films you engulf and obsess over, the designers that have made your clothes or the designers that have made the clothes of celebrities that we couldn't afford in our dizziest daydreams to set designers, costume makers, painters, sculptors. Art is everywhere. So go out and celebrate it because art is important and it's yours for the taking. And there you have it, another episode of Joe's Art History Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. All images that were mentioned throughout this podcast can be viewed on my Instagram, which is at Joe's Art History, and you'll find them in my highlights reel. So if you go along to the number which this episode corresponds to, I think this is episode 53, if you go along to 53 in my highlights reel, you will find the images there. If you would like to get in touch and discuss anything that you heard today, please feel free to do so. You can email me, joesarthistory at gmail.com or you can DM me on Instagram. My DMs are always open and it's always lovely to hear from you. As this is the penultimate episode of season two, next week will be our last and that means I'm starting the search 
for new episodes for season three. If you are listening and you think you have an episode in mind that you would, or a topic rather, that you would like to talk about, please do get in touch via email or Instagram and I would love to talk to you about your topic of choice. This podcast is also available to watch via YouTube in video format. You can find me, Joe's Art History, that is the channel's name, on YouTube, as well as the back catalogue of all podcast episodes. If you have a moment, it would be great if you could leave the podcast a review. It helps other people find us and it does mean a lot. You can now leave a review on iTunes and Spotify. There's a little sort of star icon right at the top of the podcast and you can rate the podcast from one to five stars. It takes two minutes and it's completely free and it would mean a lot to me if you could do so. Finally, my name is Joe McLaughlin and I've been your host and your friendly art historian here on Joe's Art History Podcast and I look forward to welcoming you next time. Until then, keep learning and remember, art is for all. Bye.